with Farzana Ali at one of my incredible women series. Aaj hamare saath hain Ms. Amina Sayed. She is managing director of Lightstone Publishers and former MD of Oxford University Press. Welcome ma'am. Thank you Farzana. Uh, ma'am we are quite excited to have you uh, in this platform since your profile is very rich and we would like to start from your professional profile. Thank you. Well actually I began my uh, professional life in Lahore. Um I was teaching at the Lahore American School um uh in um, the late 70s and uh, after that I joined uh, Oxford University Press in Pakistan and it was a, a very small office in those days. This was in the 7980 lo uh, long time ago. And uh, because it was such a small office I was given charge of the entire Punjab and uh, what was then known as a frontier province um so i had to travel all over the punjab and the frontier to promote oxford university press books not just in schools but in um, universities and medical colleges and libraries so i traveled a lot uh, all over and uh, as i said because oxford university press was very small we didn't have uh, facilities uh, a lot of facilities so i was actually you know i had to travel by train and uh, by by coaches by public buses uh, so i got a lot of experience uh, in in traveling and i would go to abbottabad and rawalpindi islamabad jhelum peshawar and i would be traveling on my own so that's why i started and uh, i mean it's a long story about how i covered these areas um Then in 1985 my husband was transferred to um Karachi uh where he joined uh, Lever Brothers and uh, so we moved to Karachi I was happy to move to Karachi because my parents were living over there uh so I continued working with Oxford University Press over there uh, but then I felt that um, I became ambitious I felt that maybe I should set up my own business um So I actually left Oxford University Press in 1986 and I began my own business. And in those days I called it Sayyad Books. And it was also a, uh, I wanted to make it into a publishing house. Um because I was aware that at uh, at OUP most of the books were imported. And I felt that you know in Pakistan we need to have our own books. I didn't want our children to be using books from Singapore or the UK. I wanted them to use books about our lives, about our context and our environment. Culture. Uh so then I set up my own business. Um and that was in 1986. In 1988, OUP invited me to come back as head of uh, sales and marketing. So I said, but you know, I'm the proprietor of my own business and it was beginning to do well. I had gone past the teething trouble it was the beginning. So I refused. So they said all right what would what is your uh, requirement? I said I want to be the MD. So they agreed. So 1988 I became the MD of Oxford University Press Pakistan. But in those days it was a tiny business it was in a small house in Karachi. And uh, but it was a uh, multinational so that uh, it made me the first woman uh, that's uh, in Pakistan to become the head of a multinational. So uh, it's a great pride for us that uh, today a pride of Pakistan is sitting in front of us on this platform. As you have had a number of awards and you have also got star and stars from president of Pakistan would you like to share those feelings when you received that award? Well um thank you for asking that question because in 2005 i was given the order the most excellent order of the british empire which is obe uh, by the british queen and of course i was honored and delighted to have received that um and then uh, in 2013 i was given the knight of um, arts and literature by the uh, government of france again i was very happy but i always had this feeling that i've been recognized by the british government by the french government but not by my own government so um that's why i was absolutely thrilled and delighted when in 2018 i was given the sitara imtiaz because i thought that for me was the the real i mean of course it was an honor to be 
recognized by Britain and France. But to be recognized by my own country was something special. Huh? Oh yeah, it's beautiful, undoubtedly. So uh, now it's a long journey that you have achieved, uh, you know, almost you have worked with every single department of education. And nowadays there is a great debate on SNC, single national curriculum. So what is your take on that? Well, I think a single national curriculum is a good idea. And I have studied the curriculum and uh, it has some uh, very strong points in it and I think it will add uh, to the standards of education in the country. So I would su I support it. It is, uh, I uh, was also, I was involved in the 2006 curriculum in a, in a small way and which was also, I felt, an excellent um, change um, and a very good curriculum because, you know, it, um, it was promoting um, peace and harmony and respect for one another in Pakistan because you know, ours is such a diverse country, mashallah. We have people from all ethnic backgrounds, people who speak different languages, people from different religions. And I think we should make that into our strength, which it is, by working together, by respecting each other. Because you know, if you form a team or a group, and if the team is diverse and it, it has people from different backgrounds, who have different uh, in, uh, experiences. So it actually enriches the process of decision making. So I think in Pakistan, this is our strength. And uh, the 2006 curriculum, as well as a single national curriculum of 2020, uh, promote that strength. Uh, because you will find in the uh, single national curriculum that they're saying that uh, we have to respect one another, we have to work together, and uh, that is what will make Pakistan into a great country. Uh, so they are promoting this kind of uh, a camaraderie and a collaboration and a communication with each other, which are actually the skills of the 21st century, which we need to teach our children. So I would support the curriculum. Um, however, I think what has happened recently in the Punjab by the PCTB, the Pakistan Curriculum and Texo Board, is that they, are, uh, they have said that there will be a single textbook for each subject and they have mentioned six subjects English, Urdu, Math, Science, Social Studies and Islamiyat. Now, how, first of all, how can you have one textbook for one subject? That's not the way to teach. We have to teach our children to learn from different sources, to do a lot of research and um, to acquire knowledge because there is knowledge so much to acquire. So they have to learn how to acquire knowledge. We actually have to teach them skills rather than facts and knowledge and teach them how to learn and how to acquire knowledge. Uh, and of course, teach them to be original, to express themselves in their own uh, thoughts, to, to formulate their own thoughts and to uh, express themselves originally and, you know, with originality. The single textbook, uh, goes against all of that. So uh, I'm very uh, surprised and uh, disappointed that in, uh, in the Punjab they are promoting the use of a single textbook for a, a single subject. And I hope that, um, I know that a lot of people have expressed their concerns about this and uh, I, I believe that the PCDP is reconsidering this decision and I hope that it will be reversed. So let's pray for the best. Here I just want to know that since you have worked with education field for uh, last 30 years almost I would say. Yes. So uh, what are the key factors which helps to improve literacy rate? Well, you know, if you ask me um, to uh, name one factor, I will say it's reading. Because it is, uh, we must teach, get our children into the habit of reading. And uh, I think, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've organized literature festivals in, in Karachi, in Lahore, and I'm one of the co-founders of the Children's Literature Festival, along with Bela Raza Jamil. And we've, I think we've had about 80 children's literature festivals in Pakistan. And our aim at all these festivals, at our literature festivals, is to get people interested in reading. And we do that by inviting authors, because I think when people meet authors, it creates a kind of a bond and an interest. And uh, when they talk to authors, they want to read their books. And it's very good for authors also to meet their readers. So this is what we try to do. I feel that reading is absolutely critical 
and we must provide a lot of opportunities and a lot of encouragement to students to read because it is only by reading that they will become independent learners and seekers of knowledge which we uh, which is essential for a good uh, for good educational foundations all right jee se hum janna chahte hain ki since you said that reading is the basic uh, factor key mm. point to promote literacy rates aap other foundation ke sath bhi kaam kare ji ji and aap आर्ट एंड कल्चर ऑफ पाकिस्तान के साथ भी काम करेंगे थोड़ा सा आप इसको एलेबरेट करेंगे प्लीज जी यू नो आई फील दैट लिटरेचर कल्चर आर्ट म्यूजिक आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ देम आर द सेम थिंग रियली दे डिफरेंट साइड्स ऑफ सेम कॉइन बिकॉज दे ऑल वी एक्सप्रेस आर फीलिंग्स थ्रू दिस वी एक्सप्रेस आर फीलिंग्स थ्रू लिटरेचर थ्रू पोइट्री थ्रू थ्रू राइटिंग थ्रू सॉन्ग थ्रू मूवमेंट through art so it's all a form of expression and i think it's very important that we get these uh, we use these uh, these media to express ourselves because it is only when we express ourselves that we in a way uh, we uh, i think our feelings come out um and um, we can share them with others and i think that uh, that makes us feel um uh it gives us a sense of peace and satisfaction um and at the same time we are able to communicate which is so important so i am a strong supporter of uh, of art and culture and i feel that in pakistan it is so rich uh and we should be proud of our, of our literary heritage our cultural heritage which is so strong and so evolved and it's so ancient uh that it's important that we uh communicate this to the rest of the world because it presents uh the real image of pakistan right now the image of pakistan is uh, as, as we all know it's not very positive and it is through our art and culture that we can improve our image and uh, i'm very proud to be a member of the foreign um, ministers committee for the promotion of uh, pakistani art and culture because the foreign office is using this as a cultural as a diplomatic tool Uh, uh what they call cultural dim- diplomacy um so i think it's it's important that we um, promote our culture and uh, we express our pride in our literary and cultural heritage because it will um, um be wonderful for our image internationally yeah that's very really true as you said that uh, pakistan's image is not that positive when you go abroad ji and you have traveled almost every country uh, you know you have traveled a lot Ji. So there is a different you know perception and notions about Pakistan's women as well. So what we can do to change this image? Well, I think um again this is not a a, a correct image because uh, there are many images of Pakistani women there's not one image. Um and we need to look at the uh, women who have uh, made us proud. and there are and there are so many women in in every field who are doing so you know we have women uh, peacekeepers who are working for the un uh, so we need to highlight the achievements of these women and to acknowledge and recognize them and also to promote them and it is through promoting the, uh, these uh, these women who have achieved amazing uh, things in their in their different fields it's not one field but I find across uh, the professions and up, across the spectrum women have done so well but I find that most of them are unsung heroes so we have to sing about them we have to promote them and uh, through promoting them we will promote the our country and the image of women of our country it's, it's well it's such a beautiful conversation that I really don't want to end this uh, conversation today and I would like mm-hmm. to have a series of conversation with you whenever you will get the time because you are doing a number of ventures you are working with kashif foundation mm-hmm. and you are also working for uh, for the student scholarships overseas uh, scholarships for pakistan so uh, at the end any message for pakistan's youth well i think uh, the message uh, my message would be that um, they should have a lot of uh, confidence in themselves they should have they should be proud of the country that they are representing and uh, above all i think uh, they need to be they need to persevere in whatever they're doing because life is not easy there will be obstacles there will be uh, problems 
but they have to dig in their heels, not get discouraged and never throw in the towel. Just continue working towards your goal and, uh, the, and uh, where, whatever obstacles there are, overcome them, but do not uh, give up hope or do not um, feel discouraged. Uh, let me just ask one out of the box question too. Any difficult decision of your life, as you said, that life is full of obstacles, but you have to, you know, you have to overcome all those and you have to just move forward as you're unstoppable women for me. As so any difficult decision of your life that you took in any stage? Well, I think, uh, you know, in my early days, when I was traveling across uh, the Punjab and the frontier, uh, I mean, I was a young woman then and uh, I, would, I would be traveling alone and it wasn't easy. There were a lot of issues and uh, again, as I said, I was traveling on a shoestring budget. I had to go alone to Peshawar and stay uh, not at the PC because OUP couldn't afford it in those days, but I had to stay in tiny places and use rickshaws for travel. And, um, uh, and after all that effort, when I would arrive at, uh, at a customer's to meet them to promote our books, they would not want to talk to me because I was a woman and they would say, no, please send a man, we will deal with a man. Um, so these were the, you know, the difficult things that I, I mean, there are so many of such Hello. incidents that I can uh, tell, tell you about, yes. But um, again, my decision was that, and I made it clear to uh, all the customers that I was meeting, whether they were booksellers or librarians or professors, that, uh, uh, you know, if you want to do business, then you have to deal with me. Otherwise, there's nobody else. So, you know, you will, your business will suffer. Um, so, you know, I had to make such decisions and stand by them. And eventually things became easier. So you are a true representative of women empowerment, I would say. Uh, any, any message for women especially? Well, again, for women, I would say that uh, dig in your heels, um, stand by your decisions and uh, be proud of what you're doing because I think your achievements are um, not just your achievements, but they are the, they're actually paving the way for younger women who will follow in your footsteps. But I would say that women have to be very careful uh, in what they're doing because actually all eyes are, are on them. And in a way, they are, as I said, they're creating a path for others. So they have a lot of responsibility and uh, they should do the best they can and not be discouraged. Thank you very much. It was a beautiful conversation and we are uh, really privileged to have you with us today. Thank you, Farzana. I'm honored to be here.